come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> My friends, we are all interested in the future. Mm. Because the future is where we are all going to be spending the rest of our lives. Welcome to the Saturday Night Freak Show <laughs> podcast. We're a weekly re- movie review podcast that comes at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Hey, why don't you do us a favor? A little housekeeping. Go over to wherever you found us and give us a like, a star rating, or a review. Hey, we'll read those later on uh, when Igor brings us the mail later on in the show. But all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And you're going to help us become the fastest growing movie review podcast in the world. We are. Prove us wrong. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. I'm glad you got the energy tonight because... Oof. <laughs> I think the rest of us are just like <laughs> you got kind of sapped out of you. What? Yeah. What, what? By the movie? No. By no. the day in general. By life. Oh, by the okay. week. Yeah, life. Yeah. Just the, the life. state of things. Yeah. Well, we're glad that you could be re-energized <laughs> by the amazing film that Holly brought for us to watch this evening. Holly, what do we watch tonight? Tonight we watch the infamous Plan Nine from Outer Space from the year. Filmed in 56, copyrighted in 57, <laughs> released in 59. Jeez. <laughs> and directed by? The legendary Ed Wood. Okay, so... Edward D. Wood Jr. <laughs> I mean, are we operating on the idea that everybody knows the story about this movie and knows who people, uh, who Ed Wood is, or should we give them a little brief backstory? I mean, I feel like most people that tune into our show would probably have some knowledge of Ed Wood and the making of this movie or just the existence of this movie. I yeah. Say. I bet they've yeah. heard the movie, but they've heard of Ed Wood and yeah. that he didn't make good movies. Yeah. There's I, a, bet, I bet is that is the lowest passing there's a knowledge. Solid chance that they have seen the movie Ed Wood and not this movie. True. That's very mm-hmm. possible. That's the Tim Burton, the Tim Burton, Johnny Depp yeah, starring biopic. Yeah. Where Martin Landau won an Oscar, yeah, for mm-hmm. playing Bella Lugosi. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Ed Edward D. Wood Jr. Edward D. Wood Jr. Right. Uh, watching his films, you kind of, uh, at least this film, because I tell you, I have not seen anything else that he's done. I've seen Glenn or Glenda. Have you? I have. Okay. He's an eccentric individual. No. <laughs> no shit. No wonder why Tim Burton would make a movie about Ed Wood. It's just like, I identify with this eccentric individual. Yeah. And Ted, I think that was the thing that uh, Tim Burton had a relationship with one of his uh, movie idols toward the end yeah. of, uh, it was Vincent Price. Mm-hmm. Toward the end of Vincent Price's career, they became friendly and uh, I think so. He kind of saw himself in the way that Ed Wood had a oh, yeah. friendship it was a with Bella Lugosi. It was a completely mirrored relationship. You know, yeah. they he got he got Vincent Price to star in Edward or not star, but have a fairly large role in Edward Scissorhands. And he lived out this idea, this this mo- this grand this grand moment. You know, you meet your idol, but he actually had a friendship with that. And it's the exact same story with Ed Wood and Bella Lugosi. Mm-hmm. He just happened to run into him in Hollywood. And befriended him because Bella Lugosi was a lonely guy. He didn't he didn't have a lot of people in his life, and he was just looking for companionship. And he met this individual who was just as passionate about his movies as he was. Because if you know anything about Bella Lugosi, he loved his own movies. <laughs> he sure. really did. You know, he would sit at home and watch his own work all the time. So to f- meet this individual that was just as excited about it that he, as he was, they became fast friends because they really met just at the end of his life. Well, Lugosi's got like a really, it is kind of like a sad, you know, trajectory for this guy. Yes. He was a Hungarian uh, actor, stage actor, who apparently was very famous as like a romantic lead in uh, Hungary. He came to, wait, was it? Yeah, it was Hungary, right? Mm -hmm. He came to America uh, and he got cast, I believe, here. In one of the defining roles, uh, well, the defining role, the role of his career, yeah. which was uh, Dracula on stage. And then when Universal Pictures did the uh, the movie in 1931, he was cast in it. I think there was some talk about like maybe casting somebody else because he didn't really speak English very well. 
Right. But he had this really strange way of speaking, you know, mm -hmm. and enunciating his words. And they eventually cast him, you know, kept him, you know, because he was the star of the Broadway show. Mm -hmm. But after Dracula, um, there didn't really seem to be a whole lot that Hollywood was willing to take a gamble yeah. on this guy who didn't really speak the language very well. No, he just kind of kept playing Dracula in sadder parts. And well, he did some other stuff, but it was always as like second banana to yes. Boris Karloff, who had played the Frankenstein monster. And, and that's a character that doesn't even speak. Mm -hmm. But Karloff became like a huge, huge star, you know? Yeah. And uh, Lugosi would be in movies with Karloff where he'd be like, you know, the supporting player. And I think kind of, you know, resented that that was his station in life. Mm -hmm. And then eventually. Uh, at least a Ed Wood movie would have us, you know, believe that he became addicted to morphine. I think he had like some, he had like a back problem or something. Mm -hmm. And that led to a morphine addiction. And then that led to uh, basically like not saying no to anything. I don't even yeah. know if he had representation at that point. I, I mean, he had so. like a comeback, I think, at some point, because that's covered in Ed Wood also, where he like comes back on like some uh, uh, nighttime uh, talk show where they get him to play Dracula. Mm -hmm. And he just can't roll with the kind of impro improvisational comedy, you know. Mm, he didn't get it. <laughs> they even said that when they were doing uh, uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, that he was kind of like a stickler for like, you know, this is what is written and we're going to yeah. do it, you know. To him, it was the craft, you know. He didn't understand comedy. He yeah. did, it just didn't translate to him at all. So he wasn't offered a whole lot of opportunity, although he was yeah. in, you know, a lot of good movies. Um you know, in the 30s and 40s, and then it kind of tapers off. And then ultimately, then he meets Ed Wood at an mm -hmm. opportune moment in Ed Wood's career. Yeah. <laughs> so who's Ed Wood Jr.? You got to give it a little backstory. Who is this guy? Um, he was from Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, and he he worked in Hollywood for a while, just trying to make it big, trying to get his big break. He really wanted to direct movies and he wanted to write movies. He wanted to have any hand that he could in the film business. And he just kept, he just kept persisting until finally a producer who was going to, he was going to make a film about a, a transvestite. That was his whole gimmick. He made some cheap movies and he had this idea to make a movie about a transvestite and he was looking for someone to direct it. And Edward was like, I can do that. Cause he was just that, he was that um, excited, I can do anything kind of guy, which I, I don't know, I kind of love about him. He was just so like enthusiastic. He's like, I can make a picture. I can make the best picture for you. And, you know, just <laughs> and he had the idea of Glenn or Glenda. And so he he kept pitching that he could do it. And he had like the pizzazz to, to do it. And the guy's like, all right, you got like three days to write it. We're shooting on Monday. Just give me what you got. Um, because he brought Bella Lugosi into it. He's like, what you need is a star, and I can give you a star. I can give you Bella Lugosi. And he's like, whatever, fine. I, I make cheap movies. I don't give a shit. Um, so he let him write it, and he ended up writing Glenn or Glenda, which is not about a transvestite. It's about um, a cross-dresser. But they went for it, let him do his thing, um, and that was kind of his his intro into directing. Did the, I forget now, but did the lead actor quit or was he always going to play I think Glenn he or Glenda himself? Because he wrote it based on his own life. He himself was a cross-dresser and he wrote the movie about his life and his relationship with his current girlfriend. It was very much, um, uh, very much just a mirror of his actual life. So I think he was always okay to play that part yeah he's like i can do it because he had done i think jailbait yeah. was prior to that i mean he had directed yes. films yes. prior to glenn or glenda but it's yeah. but was yeah was glenn or glenda the first one where he had employed lugosi or was that like bride of the monster no it's the first one according to this yeah glenn or glenda mm -hmm. okay so he had used lugosi on a couple of films so i mean he was uh i think he was also known he was an alcoholic yeah uh ed wood uh cross dresser mm-hmm uh, and, uh, eventually I think he started, he like ended up, he wrapped up his career. I think they said making like pornos. Yes. Yeah, he'd like to know the name of some. Necromania, lesbian love, sex orgy, <laughs> nymphocycler, <laughs> panty girls, the young marrieds, schoolgirl, <laughs> Western lust, love mates, wet and wild girl on a bike. My favorite. What was his <laughs> last Lusty neighbor? What was his last <laughs> morning walk? Morning walk. What? Too hot to handle. That's two as in T W O. Devil Cult. I'm sure it was sexy. 
Wives at play. Ooh, prisoner lovemaking. Wait, are there like fifteen sex. more of them? The I mean, what was next door. when did he the wrap next door up part his two. Uh, <laughs> park lovers? Hollywood starlet. Big John part one. I wonder what was big about him. Big John part two. Behind the eight ball, and that's eight A T E. Behind Ew. the eight ball part two, and then we get to Night of the Ghouls in nineteen eighty four. Nineteen eighty four. Yeah. So there was a lot of, sh- and these are all shorts. A lot of short pornos. Well, I believe he also, he was married, I think his first wife, was that like uh, Dolores, was Dolores Fuller or something like that? I'm not entirely sure, but she, I think, was taken aback by the whole cross-dressing thing. She is actually in Plan 9 from Outer Space. She plays the um, stewardess, the flight attendant. Um, I'm not entirely sure you were looking at the right, he died in 78. Are you sure? Uh, Did he have posthumous porn releases? Was it late release porn? Like. Edward D. Wood Jr. Oh, well, he was he was married again. He made so much porn they they had stuff to keep releasing yeah, maybe, after maybe he died. Maybe stuff is just some stuff that's attributed to him, but it's maybe or they re-released it anniversary re-release maybe. of the porn maybe. he directed <laughs> or little clips or something. But all the porn stuffs before he died. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And generally, I think like uh, the most you know his his. Uh, the output that you would remember him for ends with like orgy of the dead or something in like in the early sixties or something like that, right? There's that night of the ghouls and orgy of the dead. The dead, I think, like at the yeah. end of his career. And when when was Bride of the Monster? Well, I think it was before right. this because this was it was fifty nine. I'm mm-hmm. playing nine for our space. Yeah. And Bride of the Monster was either in the movie right before. Uh, this or maybe two before this, Sean will tell us in a minute. But um, yeah, uh, the, but the thing is, you know, he got financing for, I think, these films. Sorry, I was still looking at the porno. <laughs> <laughs> he got financing uh, because he was able to say, like, I've got Bella Lagosi, yeah, a bankable name. Yeah, yeah, 55 and 54. Uh, 54 was Jail Bay, 55 was Bride of the Monster. Okay. okay. Was was Glenn or Glenda his first movie? Yeah, then? Uh, oh, okay. he did. Uh, there was a short. And then he did Glenn or Glenda. Yeah, okay. First yeah. One. I, the, the funding for this movie was so shoddy that a bulk of it came from a Baptist church. Mm. And so like right. half, and of, so half of them half had to get of baptized. The, half of the cast got baptized. Look, we promise we'll dedicate ourselves to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> if you give us money. <laughs> wow. It's because you, you go like, I mean, after having seen it, you're like, how did this guy have a career at all? He's kind of like the Yui Bull, right? Absolutely. Of, yeah. of 1959 <laughs> sure. or in the 50s. I mean, I don't know. Did like Ed Wood call critics like pieces of shit and ask them to like fight, like call them out to, for physical no, fights and stuff? Actually, the, no, he would read a review and he would pick like there was one review that was like, this movie's terrible. The acting's terrible. The costumes are accurate. And he centered on that. He was like, you see the costumes. And he would go on to tell people like, well, my film was called Accurate. So like, yeah. it was, yeah. Hey, you just got to pick the good parts. Yeah. He was very optimistic, which again, I kind of love. <laughs> yeah. He's a guy in love with movies, basically yes. is what it comes down yeah. to, even though he didn't seem to possess like any of the ability or, <laughs> no. or uh, just the happiness know. to be made. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is what I got from the limited amount of time I've seen yeah. uh, Johnny Depp play him. Just like he just seemed to be happy he to be was making just movies. Passionate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that could be just Depp's performance. I always thought I think Depp said he was gonna play him like he's a game show host <laughs> or something like yeah. that. I imagine that the actual guy was probably pretty troubled. <laughs> you know, so it oh, seems absolutely. Like he, yeah, I don't oh, think yeah. he was as happy as he was, as he was portrayed, but in the film industry, he was enthusiastic. Yeah. Yeah. But he continued to get these role or these jobs with the idea that Lugosi was going to be the headliner and yeah. Lugosi would still draw, you know, some kind of name, but Bella Lugosi died prior to the start of production on plan nine from outer space. Yeah. He, f- all of his, all of his, I mean, I'm sure you couldn't tell, but <laughs> all of his, all of his shots were, they filmed without a script. They were like, I'm just, I've got some ideas. I'm going to put you in these scenarios. Is this why Bella goes standing in a field going. Just standing uh, there like making four arm four times. Gestures. Yeah. 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 The that's, same just, that's the sadness part that I yeah. thought I'm just like, oh, he's doing his, he's doing his Dracula yeah, thing. There was, there was nothing on paper. He had no, I bet. he was just. Let's just film some stuff and have some stock footage. That was it. Yeah, because then the thing is, like, once you've committed to this and you've got investors now and you've got some footage of Bella Lugosi, right. do you stop working? No. No. You keep going by finding a quote unquote stunt performer mm. to a chiropractor. play. Chiropractor. Yeah. Well, it was like his girlfriend's chiropractor. Yes. <laughs> 
uh, I can't remember this guy's name, was Tom something. It ended up yeah. just basically, he looks absolutely nothing like Bella Lugosi. And uh, he just had, wears a cape and Luckily, he puts his cape. arm in front of he's, his face. He's much taller. He, yeah. Looks yeah, and yeah I could tell the top of his head was thinner. Like, mm-hmm. he's just, yeah. You like tell. half of you like half tell. of the people in this movie were just like friends. You don't like, say. Yeah. Well. Right. I know. Like there was a producer that had some people staying at his house. So they were just in it. It was just, yeah. Whoever they could find. There's well, a collection get, of people. Somehow he was able to collect uh, a bunch of, I guess like it's a little group of weirdos. Yes. Right. That he was able to Misfits. pull together. Yeah. Uh, Tor Johnson, the wrestler. Plays the oh, inspector. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vampira was a host of horror movies in Los Angeles. Bella Criswell Lugosi was a big fan of hers. Well, I bet. <laughs> Ooh, Vampira. Yeah. Uh, but she basically, I think, uh, borrowed her shtick from Charles Adams. That was a Morticia Adams kind of look. Yeah. And then she claimed later and sued Elvira because mm-hmm. she said Elvira was stealing her act. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Criswell, who was some kind of psychic. A uh, guy Criswell who had predicts. a show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, called Criswell Predicts. Um, so they all are in this film, Plan Nine from Outer Space, originally shot as <laughs> grave robbers, grave from, robbers outer space. from outer space, which uh, they say in the intro. Yeah, why they yeah. change the title? You know, I don't really know. Nineteen fifty nine, maybe Grave Robbers was the. They're just like, hey, we can't do that. I don't, re- I don't recall why they changed it. They changed it like halfway through no, a production. Appeal to a broader audience and just call it Plan Nine. <laughs> you don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Grave Robbers is so much cooler, though. Well, I know. Yeah. And, and it, it was, actually makes some kind yeah. of the plot is like oh, they are Grave Robbers from outer space. And it's, um, um, it was it was used later on in a Danzig song. It's been used in yeah. a lot of shit. I mean, well, well the, the, their production company that was renamed to Plan Nine after this movie. Well, this uh, is the thing yeah. too. Like everybody now calls this movie the worst movie ever made, but that distinction was given to it by the film critic Mike Medved. Mm-hmm. Medved, right? Yes. Wrote a book called like the Golden Turkey something or the worst turkeys of all time in 1980. Mm-hmm. So basically, Ed Wood had been forgotten. I mean, nobody knew who Ed Wood right, really was, right. right? His output had kind of faded to obscurity, but it would ch- show up on the like late show like, or late something because yeah. I think they were public domain. Yeah. And yeah. so you know, late night TV horror hosts, whatever, like the, like play the up all movies. night kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it comes to us from an age that fifties. It's like I don't even know if that's the worst of the batch. Have you ever seen? I'm gonna throw some titles because these movies at one point were legendary. Robot monster. Nope. No. This is maybe if you've seen it, it's a guy in a gorilla suit with a di- giant diving. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen, seen that. like clips yeah. from it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of unsettling looking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, killers from space. Anyone? Nope. Anyone? No. They're just guys with these gigantic like eyeballs yes. stuck onto their. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That sounds great. Uh, cat women on the moon. Yeah. Oh. I've heard of that one. Okay. Heard mm-hmm. of that one. Don't trying forget if that title any- once you hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there are any others that are in that era of like, wow, in, sci- in the science fiction genre, you found some of the worst movies of all time mm-hmm. because somebody could just go like, eh, it's science fiction. It's hot right now. <laughs> yeah, you just combine two things. Cat women. Yeah, they're all Mad Lib titles. <laughs> put, them on, <laughs> put them somewhere. Put them on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> we can pull that off in a soundstage. Well, because the actual, you know, like creature from the Black Lagoon or It came from outer space and all that actually did well. And I think, like, maybe, like, if you're not a very sophisticated audience, you know, and you're just kind of going to see whatever every week, right. you may think that they're about the same kind of. This is an kinda, actual movie. Yeah. So that's how Ed Wood gets his movies made. So Plan 9. Right, this is the film. What I mean, Criswell welcomes us into this thing. It's hilarious, <laughs> right? Is it's it pretty, hilarious? It's pretty great. Yeah, right. With his little Criswell predicts, you're all living in the future. This is going to affect you. right. And you're here, all living in the future. Where we'll be in the future, and <laughs> I'm just like, there's, there's too there's many. There's a futures. lot of futures. <laughs> Too many futures. And like most of this movie, everything he's saying is kind of contradicting itself. Yeah. The whole movie does. Yes. Mm-hmm. Con- the whole contradicts movie. itself. Yes. Mm. Um, well, we have uh, at the beginning, and Criswell provides a lot of narration over explaining shit that, okay, well, they use the Bella Lugosi footage, the old man, that's who he is. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, yeah, at the funeral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So the old man stood by the grave. <laughs> at the funeral for his wife, who yeah. apparently was Vampira. That's right. Right? Yeah. This is going to be an exercise on did we follow this movie? <laughs> or Great. Not. Homework. That's the fun awesome. Of it. Yeah. Good. I get to relive it Standardized again. Standardized testing. Explain it to me now. <laughs> yeah. Well, because so, I didn't put that together. <laughs> No, no, I no. didn't either. No, I'm like, oh, Vampira is his wife. Did nope, nope, didn't put it together because yeah, this is explained <laughs> in the voiceover. Like his, the old man's wife stood watching. Well, yeah, the, w- wife. There's so many people. This story is not linear. <laughs> so you, just because you say there's a wife doesn't mean I've made the connection that this woman is the right. wife. She had the wingspan of a basketball player <laughs> and the talons of an eagle. Yeah. <laughs> And she looks like uh, a vampire, I suppose. Well, that would make sense. They put the yeah, Dracula yeah. and, he looks like a and vampire. vampire. They are like a together. vampire dream team. They really are. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, she is reanimated from the dead uh, by a bunch of aliens mm. from the planet. Did they say? What the I have no is? idea. If they did, I don't think they did. I don't, I don't think, think so. I think there was, was a lot of my planet does yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the only name we got was the one guy whose name was Eros. Yeah. yeah. I think that was the only name And then there was said. the ruler. Yeah. The very effeminate ruler played by Bill Murray in... Uh, yes. The, yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful. It's fa- Sean, you're going to love that movie. <laughs> I have to watch this movie. You're going to love um, it. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so there's a, a supreme Wait, have, ruler. Like, guy, guy liner it's wonderful. Like, dark yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. A lot, gotta... there's a lot of legit people in Edward. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it's A-list wonderful. cast, yeah. It's yeah. good. It's, it's a good movie, especially after you've seen this. Yeah. I mean, and I've never seen this, so I would never go to that movie. Just, well, well, you don't need to see these I'm movies sure, to enjoy but, Edward, but it does make it more well, enjoyable. Well, that's what I want. To know. Yeah. I want to know the uh, the jokes. And, it's kind of like, uh, well, you saw Dolomite. Have you seen I, I was uh, just Dolomite Is My Name? Just is watching it? it today before I came over I here. I think that was written by the guys who wrote Ed Wood. Uh, what's their names? Um, uh, Larry something and the other up. guy, and they wrote Problem Child, I think, also. But oh, they well, did they this. have quite a credit <laughs> there. Yeah, there's, I don't know. I feel like there's there's like a whole subgenre of the movie and then the movie about the movie that is just spectacular, like The Room, The Disaster Artist, yep, which is exactly. a great combination. Right. One of my favorites, Citizen Kane and Archeo 281. Mm-hmm. Archeo 281, is, I think, is better than Citizen Kane. I'm saying it. I enjoy it more. Archeo is great. It's great. I enjoy it that's more. It's wonderful. It is written by the same guys. Holy shit. And that's what I said. That's wonderful. So they have a... Uh, they have uh, Larry... Uh, yeah. Larry... Uh, uh, just Kozlowski. Larry Kar- Karaszewski and Scott, Al- Scott Alexander. Okay. Um, but that's... Well, you bring that up. I was getting that same feeling of the uh, the bunch of weirdos that got together to make a movie. Like, I was just yeah. watching Dolomite Is My Name t- today, and that's it's the same thing. It's just a bunch of people who got together and... Bunch and of you're like, and- do they have any business like making a movie? Let me ask you this right now. Is mm-hmm. Plan 9 from Outer Space worse than The Room? No. There, no, I don't think so. No. And you guys haven't seen I, Manos, no, The Hands of Fate? And, and that it. one always keeps coming Her, up. I think <laughs> Troll 2 is worse than this movie, too. I don't even want to watch Troll 2. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to throw out a hypothesis. No, the Room is But I don't bad. know if anybody can prove me wrong on this. Whenever we talk about the worst movies ever made, yeah. I don't think anybody remembers the worst movie ever made. I think the worst movie ever made was so fucking awful, atrocious, and boring. That, that it's been erased n- from existence? Yeah. 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 Probably. That nobody remembers it. Probably. <laughs> Probably. No. There is yeah, something. About- <laughs> there has to be redeeming qualities in each of these movies to be memorable, right? Yeah, so right? yeah, there, if it was, if it, yeah, I get what you're saying, if it was truly the worst movie ever made, it'd be so bad you wouldn't even remember it because it'd just be boring yeah. and or it'd you be would forgettable. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be something that keeps coming back around and has midnight showings at the music box. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. That wouldn't be happening for the worst movie ever made. Right. right. Yeah. So while we label movie, them this, they are obviously. Yeah, I not. imagine yes. it would be like impossible to sit through the worst movie ever made. You yeah. just be like, I can't take this anymore. Mm-hmm. It's got to go. I'm yeah. gonna give a special recognition to the movie Dahmer starring Jeremy Renner. Oh, that's that a bad was, one. That's a fucking bad <laughs> that's movie. A really I bad hate one. that movie. Mm-hmm. And that movie <laughs> thinks it's like an art house movie. Yeah. The movie thinks like he thinks he's getting an Oscar nom for this movie while they're doing it. That's the worst part is that it's pretentious and it's bad. Yeah. What? What? What's the last movie you you were just like? I fucking hate this yeah. movie. Oof. Independence Day research. It's <laughs> fuck that movie. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, mean, it's I don't know. Just came to mind, I mean, no, that's, yeah, that's Pet Cemetery remake. Pet Cemetery remake. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. That, that wasn't like atrociously made. It was just no. like misguided. It, yeah. You know, in so many. But, but it was so frustrating how misguided it was. Yeah, you know? this is true. Yeah. yeah. 
It made me hate that movie. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. I hate yeah, it. Yeah, it was bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Child's Play remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, which oh, I, Jesus. Hopefully I said enough bad Oh, it's been a long year, it. hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it has. Uh, dear dear Brailler, let us know what movie do you fucking hate? Yeah. What movie just, just like, like makes you your blood it, boil? You just like, fuck yeah. you. Ugh. You need to rant about it? This is your chance. Yeah. I want to hear it. Yeah, you can leave those comments on our no Facebook redeeming. page. No redeeming comments. I feel that way about the very <laughs> end of High Tension. The whole movie is really good, but the very end of the That's High what I'm saying. makes no, me angry. No redeeming parts. I want the from start it's to finish. Awful, you're just like fuck you. Movie. Why would you have finished a movie if it made you feel that way start to finish? You, our, I'm sorry. Wouldn't you have but turned you, it off no, if no, no, it no, made no. you feel that way from the jump? Some of also, them you've paid to sit there. Also, that's the thing. Leave? I don't. You don't get to call a movie the worst movie if you did not sit through the whole thing. If you walked out halfway through. I don't want to hear your opinion on it. You need to sit and suffer. Because it could have had an awesome landing. Is something. And then yeah. there's a redeeming part about it. Mm-hmm. You need to have sat through the entire thing and be like, nope, hate it. <laughs> I don't like this. I'm going to walk out on this movie it. and then I have an opinion on it. No, you don't. Because you didn't see the whole movie. Yeah. Well, this one's kind of, I mean, every, everyone has always said that this is one of the worst movies ever made. I mean, there, I'm not going to argue that it isn't. It's not, you know? uh, it's not good. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's... At this point in time, it's like, it's cute. The little self flying saucers, little flying cigars <laughs> with the it, strings attached to them. Is it really any worse than any of its contemporaries right. at the yeah. time? I was going to say. Yes, is it? Yeah, yeah. Like, but there's yeah. also just like... There was I'm other gonna, bad movies at the time. Well, I'm like the offended. ones that I mentioned. Yeah. yeah, I mean, those are pretty awful, but I mean, like, it's This still, is not an offensive movie. Like, I'm right. not... Uh, it doesn't feel like it's... Of its <laughs> because it's of the 50s, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there are... I mean, there were really good movies sure, that were made. I agree. Even in like the lower end of the spectrum, there's still mm-hmm. like a lot of. But good even stuff. in War of the Worlds, I can see strings. You know, That's there's true. lots of Godzilla. You can see strings. Yeah, yeah. even yeah. in this stuff, I can see strings. Where Matt work stuff. doesn't work, so maybe maybe that's the thing. Maybe we forgive the strings yeah, now but, because I mean, even in the so-called good ones, you know, yeah, you still like, yeah, see the but strings. But we're talking strictly about like effects and props and like, right. I mean, we gotta go this, with acting this movie i mean the, we, po- I we, the, the plot pilot. the plot, the plot. We, we could not follow this fucking movie the editing, the editing is editing ridiculous is the, the, like the the, the, the use acting. of the use of stock footage caused there to be no official aspect ratio to this movie because True, it's it just does jump it, around. it jumps around a lot like it's not a well made movie isn't good. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the 15 minute long scene between the one pilot and his wife <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I, I in scenes like that where it should just be like a tour of those two people talking right they'll cut just it's like they they feel uncomfortable going more than like five seconds of screen time without getting a cut if it's just two people talking yeah. like there's constantly like we need to do something to add interest so and they just, just yeah. wide like a, shut a side angle up. or right. something yeah. it's yeah. Like, we like, move the camera over five feet yeah I think it's because yeah. they were like something happened to the film and they had to like they're messing with shit and it moved over a foot mm. Not to mention the reusing of multiple shots multiple times. Yeah. And like sometimes out of context. But not necessarily the same footage, just the same shot. Like, so you take a shot that lasted 30 seconds and they show you five seconds here, two seconds there, and 10 seconds later. Yeah. But it's all from the same it's tape. It's enough to think you're watching the same thing over and over for again. Like three to five minutes. Yeah. You're sitting there like going like, you're like, saying like yeah, the same when, shit. When uh, Paula, I think Paula, when she was running through the cemetery and they kept cutting from her to the big zombie guy to yeah. fake Dracula. Like, oh, so on. It was, no, I got it. Yeah. She's running. She's Multiple running the times. Same shots. Over same and over and over again. part of the cemetery. Mm hmm. Mind numbing. Yeah, these bodies are going to get offended how many times you've run over their grave. <laughs> what is this movie about? Mm, it is about taking over aliens Earth. coming to Earth and taking over By, uh, uh, bodies, basically creating zombies to uh, try to take over the Earth. Yeah, it's because a movie. Be- is that, yes, is that right? Because yes. I, do, I seem to remember a character, an alien character, when he was explaining himself, saying, "We came to you for help." Is that what that you was said? before? <laughs> was it? This yeah. was this guy now had a logic they're... train to, that I could not follow. They tried to contact him before, but then he's just like, "But you won't listen. You're so stupid, stupid, stupid." You're stupid. stupid. Yeah, I loved that. And those <laughs> the aliens are chew- chewing out the hapless. They earthlings. are. And since they decided not to listen to the aliens, and the aliens think they're stupid, they are now going to uh, raise the human dead and take over. Yes. Of which they seem only to be able to resurrect three 
people. Sure. <laughs> yes, in Hollywood, one, California. One at a time yep. in Hollywood, California through an arduous process. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but in the in defense of the movie, the ruler at one point does say, you only did a few. You haven't done enough. Mm-hmm. So he's at least calling him out. Like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, like, you're kind of slacking going? on your job. Yeah. The earthlings, they are, it's funny how, because they can think, they are afraid of that which does not think. Yes. The dead. Right. Logical. All right. Makes sense. Um... Yeah, the aliens resurrect uh, 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 the the old man's wife. Yes, uh, the Otto Preminger apparently. Um, Tor, the, uh, Tor, the police yeah. detective, and uh, Bella Lugosi's character. Sure. They're the three that get brought Slash back. A chiropractor. Yep, that's right. And uh, this brings the interest of the police, right? Led by right. a uh, detective who's always gesturing with a handgun. Mm-hmm. That we're like you do, like scratch, <laughs> yeah. scratch yeah. out of your face with the gun and everything. Yeah, it, yeah. and he claimed af- he claimed that um, he was doing that on purpose to see if Ed Wood would catch it because he knew he was an incompetent director, and of course it was not taken out of the film. So. Of well, I mean, incompetent direct. I mean, everything about the movie they cut from daylight scenes to nighttime scenes. Uh, all the Willy props nilly. are wobbly. Uh, there's a bunch of graveyard uh, graves in the graveyard that nearly fall over. We see a boom mic for a hot minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, less than I thought we were going to. Right, I thought that was going to happen a lot more. That's true. Yeah. And it's just uh, like the bottom part of it. You, it's like I've seen. I expected to see more of the actual mic, you know. Yeah. But it, I mean, it was there. But I've seen more in network. TV shows. I was thinking yep. the same thing. Yeah. Especially those multi-cams, man. Well, even yeah. like the one-camera dramas that uh, um, that I have on my network, I'm like, I don't know if we get a different... Um, because we're getting like the full HD prints of this shit, mm-hmm. so I don't know if we're just getting expanded like the full thing. But yeah. I see mics mm-hmm. coming in from the sides all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, yeah. I don't know if this showed in, in the actual airing, but there it is now. I was watching reruns of Dawson's Creek not too long ago, and there was several. <laughs> oh was yeah, you like, watch anything yeah. that was made in the 90s and 2000s on Netflix now? Boom, mics fucking everywhere. But, Gilmore yeah, Girls, the Gilmore they, Girls is really guilty yes, of it too. They are. But they didn't air widescreen, no, in the 90s, right. right? So now you're seeing the full yep. remastered. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that was like so. outside the safe area. Yeah. Right. And they're like, no, it's fine. You won't see that on TV. Well, that'll yep. never be seen. <clears throat> yep. yep. Well, thank God for high definition now. That's and right. we've gone back and retransmitted yeah. it. <laughs> um, so the uh, the police detective, or the detec- the police are wandering around Did the graveyard. Did you get some Tom Atkins vibes from him? Yeah, well, yeah. I think uh, Night of the Creeps, Fred yeah. Decker. Anybody uh, in a like, trench coat. It, that was an homage to 50s, you know, and yeah. this is like a touchstone 50s, uh, you know, science fiction yeah. movie, I suppose, in that way. Um, but meanwhile, mm. in Washington, because the aliens, the UFOs have been clustered over Hollywood, California, where they, the sight of them makes uh, drunks put down their alcohol and decide to go straight. Yeah, I've had too much. Uh, <laughs> but also, they've been seen in, in uh, over the Pentagon. That's right. And so there they have a general who uh, decides that his way of greeting the aliens is to launch a battery uh, of rockets at them. General Turgidson. That's it. Because he had the stock footage to do so. <laughs> the whole scene is made of, I mean, this is like a, a plot device made of basically all they shot was the general standing against a wall, which looking is supposed to be the binoc- sky, binoculars. looking off into yeah, the Yeah, that you know, sky is awfully creased. Yeah, yes. <laughs> he's looking Should off with out binoculars, and that's all he had. But out of that, he was able to get aliens come down over the Pentagon, which we see, you know, they're picked up on radar. Soldiers deliver rockets right. and like a barrage of rockets, which we have a good like minute worth of rocket footage. It really and we're going to mm-hmm. use it you all. You don't know how long a minute worth of rocket footage is until you sit through it. Because mm-hmm. that's a lot of rockets. And then like for impact on the UFOs, we have what, like sparklers being thrown at them or something? Like firecrackers or something? Sure. That's what it looks mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. That's why that w- sky so creased, Sean. They're throwing fucking fireworks at it. Guess so. This is high tech, high tech <laughs> stuff. But I believe in every minute of it. I want to tell you right now. You felt like you were in it, Colin. That's right. Nothing is going to break my suspension of dis- disbelief. So because of this, they pack the uh, the general up and ship him out to Hollywood, mm. right? Because I think even though the you're general, you're in charge. You're in charge of the of the sauce of the field saucer activities or whatever oh yeah it was a really funny was that what it, it was, was it was yeah. it was i think it was saucer I, field 
activities. Saucer it, fuel director or something. Right. right? Yeah. It's in his fucking title. And the, he's brought in like, so do you think you believe in flying saucers? Because the government doesn't. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's in his fucking title. Yeah. He's in charge of saucer field activities. But he's but his boss is basically saying, like, you could be arrested for saying that you believe in this. And you could be court martialed. Yeah. It's his job. <laughs> and then trap. he's like, There are flying saucers. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? You're correct. Well, in order to prove this, we're gonna play for you and this is the you know, another like what so the aliens have been coming for a while. Yes. But they've been communicating with uh, sounds that we can't understand until we develop the language translator, which is called the something oh, gravitometer or whatever. The, yep. The and <laughs> sure. And so they run. They run. So, but it's not the aliens. It's the spaceship has been communicating apparently in some way, and they record it and they play this back. And so there's a scene where you got two guys playing back a tape recorder, and then the voice of the alien starts talking and basically laying this whole thing out. Mm. And it's just uh, watching these two guys. Stand there, just reacting in close-ups <laughs> to like, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh, that's, mm, no, yeah. oh, yeah, mm-hmm. as this thing monologue goes on for, I don't know, it felt like forever. Uh, this is this is the part of the movie where it starts slowing down. <laughs> yep, yeah. And we get five-minute scenes where they're just like, well, you see, in the science of our planet, it yeah. really turns into a fifty sci-fi movie it, at this yeah. point, it does. which was doing such a good job of not doing that yeah. right. this point. between the scene at the base and then. The alien explaining everything Ugh. that took forever. Yeah, I it was. Slowed way I down. did not. Yeah, because it's almost like he brought down. Like, well, if you look at this chart. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It right was like here. a lecture. I've, I've prepared a PowerPoint presentation. This, if you look here, this is where the movie took a left turn. <laughs> And now you're bored. It yeah. might as well have popped up with the fucking fifties countdown dial to the the broadcast yeah. we're about to yeah. watch. Well, see, that's the thing. I always <laughs> wonder like, like why I get so you bored. want to know about aliens, do you? <laughs> but why do you get bored in those scenes, right? I mean, the worst sin a movie can commit is being boring, right? Because it's word salad at that point. Yeah. I think so I, because I, he it contradicts himself all over the place by saying like, "We're here because you don't believe in us. We're here because." You tried to attack us and shoot right. us out of the sky. You're here. Be- we're here because you started the. Uh, you discovered the atom bomb. We're here to help you. We're here to destroy you because you found the atom bomb. Because you're next going to find the sunlight bomb or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Where he explains how somehow human beings are going to blow up the they're sun. Gonna, yeah, essentially they're going to harness solar power and create it into the ultimate bomb. Which Where, will wherever the yeah. wherever sunlight exists, we can explode it. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're the actual atoms in the, right. the ray of sunlight, which is as scientific as they got in explaining it. Yeah, what they get the whole we can the explode whole, the sun. I think I could follow the whole. Imagine sure. that the, the sunlight <laughs> is gas, a tank of gasoline. Yeah. We spread that gasoline. To yeah, any time a '50s sci-fi movie is going, imagine if you will, <laughs> it's not gonna be good. Or it's brilliant. Or I mean, yeah, but man, forward right thinking. Ed Wood, mm. writer, director, editor. <laughs> Of Plan Nine from Outer Space, yes. and small cameo in them. Is he in it? Yeah. Who's it? Who is he? Um, there's this. There is a scene where a newspaper is picked up off the street, and you see a man from like shoulder down. Yeah, the that's, bum that picks up the, the bum, newspaper. The bum. That's him. Oh man, he oh. did some awesome bum acting. It was because he did that thing <laughs> where you lean over too far and you hit your hands. To, I. I know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, his, I've been there before. These are pristine <laughs> clothes that he's wearing. They are. But we know he's a bum because he's got the stagger. Right. He's walking around. I can pick up this newspaper that says saucers spotted over, over Hollywood. Hollywood. This is not a horror movie. Do you ever think that it was? Has it ever no. told, told you that it was a horror movie? I, I, think no. it, I think at some point before I ever saw it, I thought it probably was going to be just because Bella Lugosi and Vampire were in, and Vampire were in it. So I assumed that it, ha- it was going to have those elements, but it does not. No, I always thought it was just an alien movie. Like, yeah. Like flying saucers Sci-fi. and shit. And like, mm-hmm. that is what I but thought shot Because I didn't like, know Bella Lugosi was in it. Yeah, Tor me neither. Johnson, like, because uh, that's a, you always see Tor Johnson carrying somebody. It's the, the 50s monster. Sure. Right, it's the Frankenstein. Always carrying a woman. Which I'm not going to lie. I dig it. He's creepy. I yeah. like him. 
Mm-hmm. I, the contacts, like I right. like it. And his face. Yeah, that, I like, like the eye got, makeup like, on him too. Is really his good. His mouth is just. Yeah. It's, why is the top of his head smaller than the bottom of his head? It's weird. <laughs> just ugh. like an. Yeah. The, like, like contoured an is like, like mouth and his. He just, does have an egg head. He has yeah. an egg head. He does. He's, He's just like. like uh, who's the Adams family? Is it cousin? Fester. Nit? No, yeah. it Fester. Fester. Uncle Fester. Fester. It's like a bigger mm-hmm. Uncle Fester. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Tor Johnson. <laughs> Tor. I don't know his story. I don't Is know he either. Swedish, but German, what the hell? He seems German. Tor. Tor. He's probably he's Icelandic. I, was like, I think he's Icelandic. Yeah. Probably. Or Norwegian or Swedish Tor or something like Jung- that. Unensen. He's <laughs> European. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. there's no sun in his name, so he's not Icelandic. Um, oh, that, yeah. Because that's what they do. Yeah. Um, I'll just write him off as Tor German. Johnson. Oh, it is Johnson. Name is Johnson. Johnson. Oh, it is Johnson. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. He's, maybe he's Icelandic. Mm-hmm. Might be. I, <laughs> Tor. How many times have we seen the uh, why aliens are coming to Earth storyline? How often do we see that? Why aliens are coming to Earth? Like that that moment when they're when they're explaining why they're here and where, how Earth people are ruining everything and and, and it's always that yeah. too. It's just like we've come to your planet because we've seen yeah. where you're going. And I'm like I've seen you. that so many times. Yeah, but I wonder, like that specific warning. Is that uh, Day of the Earth stood still? I was going to say, the first time, yeah. I think, is the Day of the Earth stood still, which was, what? 54? No, that was 51. So it's in this decade, though. I mean, this is, okay, so this is the thing where movies went, you know, it's the the Atomic Age yeah. Yeah. movie, the worry about the atomic bomb. We know bombs um, are going off, yeah. I mean, I suppose in all of these, these are all ultimately, I mean, because they're cautionary tales, they're horror and science fiction movies, they're all anti-science movies. You know, it's like science is bad because basically if you keep pursuing the science, yeah. you're going to destroy us all. Somehow mankind is going to accidentally un- unlock the key to the universe well, and it's going to kill us all. Well, this is a story that continues and will forever well, continue. Until, until we get modernization when we get the abyss and it's just like, hey, just be nice to each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which what doesn't work as good is like uh, if you keep using that thing, you're going to turn yourself into a fly. You know, <laughs> right. uh, you know? Is and, bad. And, at the, and at the end, it's like, well, the original fly, it's like even after like the guy, you know, it's like, well, he turned into a fly, but we have to destroy that thing. That's right. Because, <laughs> you know, imagine the power that's in it. We have to <laughs> can't keep the power yeah. in his giant fly head. So much power. Yeah. I wish they had utilized Vampira more in this. She just yeah, walked around for a while. Yeah. It's kind of mm-hmm. sad. She actually, she was the one that refused to have dialogue. Why? She hated the dialogue in this movie and was like, I won't do that. Okay. So okay. she refused. That's fair. Okay. She also did her own makeup and costume and like rode the bus to the set in full costume and makeup, which I think is great. Like That's that. dedication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love Why it. the fuck was she in this movie? Yeah. Well, I, yeah mean, I don't know. You know, she couldn't have been. I. That's why I was like, well, it's Bella Criswell. Bella Lugosi and Edward really <clears throat> liked her. Yeah. And the paycheck and was good? Said yes. I mean, they had money coming from <laughs> somewhere, paycheck. I suppose. I mean, the main actual star of the movie... Is some guy who like appeared? What's his name? Like Grantley Willow or something? Like that. You'd have to look Wilcott? it up. Is that what it is? Wilcott, Westcott, something like that. Is a Wilcott. He uh, he was in like a bunch of. I mean, like every Western TV show that I you remember think of. him from yeah. westerns. Yeah, Bonanza, and he Rawhide, okay. all that stuff. And he told Ed Wood, he's like, "This is the worst script I have ever read in my life," and then reluctantly signed on. <laughs> because yeah, somebody was like, uh, "Yeah, Gregory yeah. Walcott, Gregory Walcott." Yeah, I've seen yeah. him in some shit, but he's the pilot. Right of the uh, of the plane first <laughs> encounters the that UFOs. Stares bored out the window. Mm-hmm. No hands, not on the steering wheel, just staring out the window. Yeah. Oh my God, I if this like if this is what any pilots have ever been like in history, uh, this is frightening. Yeah, this is frightening. He is. Well, now the, they have autopilot, so now it's probably even worse. That's oh, he's God, the, I don't even know he's that. the more uh, emotional pilot. Which should tell you what yeah, the other pilot worse. is like in the movie. <laughs> I don't want my pilot to be emotional no, either. I don't want a brooding pilot. Yeah. I, I picture all pilots to be like Matt Damon in 30 Rock. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. That, that's what I imagine they're all like. <laughs> Comedy, yeah, Colin. Yeah. yeah. Comedy. I didn't land the plane in the Hudson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy would be like, what's the fucking point of trying and just drive it right into right? the river? That's he how would. he would handle the situation. Yeah, he seemed kind of bummed. Well, yeah. he also, so he lives uh, like adjacent to the cemetery. Wait, is he, this is his wife? His girlfriend. Paul, wife. his wife, yeah. Okay. Paul. 
Yeah. Uh, loves for 20 minutes. Does he? I can't remember. He doesn't get deputized by the. So eventually, the 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 colonel from the the Pentagon. Yes. Goes west. Tom Keen. Right to uh, Hollywood, and he teams up with the cops, the pilot, right? All get together. The detective, the cops, and the pilot. And they're going to fight the alien scourge. With revolvers. And they get on the, the yeah, which yeah. don't work at all. Well, There's a whole bunch okay, of shit Okay, so they going don't work, there. and does the, so does the alien ship blast Bella Lugosi? Is that what happens? Is that why? Well, the, the Supreme Ruler decides that uh, they're going to sacrifice one of the three. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the effect is, is going to have a huge impact right. on them. Right. right. Yeah. Because uh, so apparently that, that's going to help them believe that they're aliens. I don't know what the they fuck's going on. They won't believe what they see, Colin. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> How this stops them from setting the whole universe on fire, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. So I they don't just know. blast him out of the trees. That's what I got. And then he turns into a skeleton. Because the revolvers don't work on him. Didn't they send Bella Lugosi? Didn't he attack the pool party or whatever? He did. Like, oh, that, well, that's what I'm saying. And or not Bella Lugosi. His stand-in. His stand-in, right. yes. Yeah. But because they keep shooting him and nothing happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they do a cutaway to that, the forest that's always glowing, and you see a, like a beam come out. Yeah. And then. And they turn him into a skeleton. And then it turns him into a he, he, Then he falls down. Yeah. So I'm guessing mm-hmm. they just, that was when they were just like, well, destroy one just to awe them. Yeah. They were in awe. But then that eventually I mean, I was led the pesky earthlings to their spaceship, which is parked right. This in, is when they just in, go near the graveyard. Yeah, which reminds me: has anyone ever seen a movie called "The Lost Skeleton of Cadabra? No, no, it sounds a, cool. It's a brilliant yeah. title. It's a modern movie. It was made, I think, within the last ten years, and it is designed to be like an old fifties movie that cool. you never nice. heard of before. How'd that yeah. work out? There's a sequel. All right, The Return of. The Lost Skeleton. I don't know what it was called, but yeah, I, cool. I didn't see it. I'll watch nice. it. Um, there's something about the aesthetic of these movies that I think, you know, still resonates in nostalgia. Oh, right? absolutely. You know, like, sure. Absolutely. You're going to go back and try and get like all the goofy props and all that shit and, you know. Um, Just use a fog machine for where you don't have props. Yeah. yeah. Just fog it all up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got that and, black background. That's like it in this movie. You just use a shower curtain to cover the everything behind exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, which is what they did—a shower curtain. Oh sure. It was always oh, that with the back wall yep. of the. Well, it didn't seem like they had a whole lot of depth in the stage they were working on. No, no, no they didn't. There's a lot of shortcomings, folks. Sure. You have to use your imagination when watching this movie. Can you see? This is what I'm curious. If you've looked this up. Has anyone ever tried to make like uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space, like the version that Ed Wood intended? You know what I mean, like the yeah, I, the, uh, the vision that he imagined in his head. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I was gonna say I I don't know if it's a scenario that he envisioned something that he couldn't properly execute, or if his vision was just so spotty. I think this was his I vision. Can't, I can't really tell. Well, this no, it was limited by the effects and the, the money that he had at the time. You know what I'm saying? It's like, has anyone ever gone? We should do this. We should remake Plan Nine. We won't call it Plan Nine. We'll call it something else. Great we'll robbers. Steal I'm sure somebody. Steal has. this idea. I'm sure somebody. Has. And we're going to bring back dead things. By aliens are going to bring back dead things in order to take over to the take world. Take over the planet. I've seen that movie. It They're feels true. like anyway. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, so this the ultimately... aliens are stupid. Stupid. <laughs> stupid. That's like you have, you, you have, well, no, but I'm I'm saying the aliens are stupid. It's like you have multiple ships. You can apparently just blast dudes into skeletons. Why are you raising the dead to fight the humans? Like, they're, they're like, dumb. It's like the detective said. They could just use a ray. They're far beyond us. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. <laughs> uh, you guys are far beyond us. We, you know, they're even dumb. though you're insulting us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This uh, ultimately leads to a climax in which um, people talk to each other. And then the aliens just kind of like, uh, oh, they set them on fire, right? Right. They do set them on fire. How'd they do that? They get in, Yeah. They get into a fight. There is a fight. On the, on the ship. Yeah. And some equipment explodes mm-hmm. and the ship catches on fire. But luckily our heroes are able to escape. Oh, yeah. By <laughs> figuring out how to use the alien dials. Which looks that stuff, remarkably the like computer. the Interocitor from Mystery Science Theater. Mm. Mm-hmm. And they're able to hop off right before the thing takes off and, right. and explodes. What's the lesson that we're supposed to take from the movie? Because obviously Ed Wood uh, had a social uh, conscious, you know, when he was writing this. It's a fable. 
right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. No. I mean, the whole idea that, you know, some, I'm well, a, lay it on us, Colin. Well, yeah. I don't know. That's why I'm asking <laughs> if it's there. I mean, it seemed like, you I know, didn't pick up on it if it was. So. The, all the movie is, is a lecture. There's the characters always like you will fight with each other it's, and you'll I mean, fight. Same, countries will fight together. And it's sci, it's the same sci-fi stuff. It's just like, you'll destroy yourselves and you're dumb for doing it. So we're trying, yeah, to, you're we're trying to help you. Stupid. You are stupid humans and we're trying to help you. And since you won't listen to us, then we must destroy you. Otherwise you will eventually destroy all of us. There it is. I think is the message. Yeah. We're going to either help you. If you won't listen, we're going to destroy you before you destroy the entire there is, universe. <laughs> there is a ridiculous, I want to say, say documentary, maybe mockumentary, maybe a little bit of both. The Conspiracy of Plan 9. It's it's free on Prime right now, and it's like a. I was gonna say you said it's on YouTube right now. You're like, oh no, 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 it's it's free on Prime right now. It's a cross between like actual like cheesy sci-fi directors talking about Ed Wood and how Plan Nine like directly influenced them, and then it's also obviously fake interviews about the conspiracy of what Plan Nine's really about. I can't watch that. No, it's it's I've watched some of it and it's hard to get through. Yeah, Wait, I so is it like I, is I it like the, the Room Two Thirty Seven documentary, but for this movie instead? I kind of. Uh, I'll totally it's, watch that. Then I you guys are watching those documentaries <laughs> wrong. You have to watch it and laugh at those people. I can't. I yeah, can't. It's, I can't do it. I'd, yeah, it, it, having conspiracies about movies is harmless, though, so you can laugh at it. But these people, like, I don't think they're serious. I think it's comedians pretending to be serious. And I can't do that. Which I don't think is as funny as the actual people. Yeah. Right, no, the it. actual yeah. people, that's great. That's hilarious. So, I don't know. If it's some, you well, might want to check it out if it's something that interests you. I think it's conspiracy about Plan 9, something like that. Okay. But I don't know. There are conspiracy theories of the meaning behind Plan 9. Sure. Well, it's one of the better sure. ones. Deep. Uh, well, there. Well, one of them stems from um. One of them stems from like the curl on um Criswell's hair <laughs> and how it's the shape of a six. Oh, oh which shit. is like That's an, some room which is like a seven shit. backwards nine. It's really yep. it's weird. It's watch the documentary if it interests you. <laughs> What's this called? Plug it again. I, I think it's. Conspiracy of Plan Nine, the something like that. Something like that. Nine. Yeah, you let us know how it is. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Mm. But there are like actual, like I said, B movie directors talking. Sure. Like, I th- like uh, Tom Holland is on there talking a little bit about mm-hmm. how Plan Nine influenced him. Like, there are actual people talking in this, so it's. I, that's why I watched it. But I'm just curious. Obviously, um, I mean Tom Holland director, not Tom Holland. Right, Spider Man, Fright Night. Yes, what have you yes, in obviously. <laughs> But even then, it's it's shocking to me that anybody would say they were influenced by Plan Nine from Outer Space and like in a enjoy. positive way. Hey, if you watch them as a kid and you like it, you know, doesn't matter how dumb it is, yeah. it influences like, you. I want to make you know? those kind of movies, or even like that guy could make a movie. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe that's I it. Make a movie. I think that's probably it. Gives hope it, right? to people. It's just like somebody they, they let him make this movie. Mm-hmm. If he can do it, if he can do it. Anyone can. Do yeah. it. Anyone can do it. And yeah. there's you can't discount that. Mm-hmm. That is an influence. No matter how bad your movie is, it's like you got so to you make go. a movie. Ed Wood, like said, one of the great yeah. influencers of our time. Like I said, I have I admire his passion. He's just he was determined if to make you movies. Got that you can make something. He was really proud of this movie. I don't know. He, stand, he stands by his work. Well, I like the Ed Wood movie where he, this is the one I'll be remembered for. <laughs> He's like, not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> if we were all making a movie and we had two like really famous people that we were obsessed with to be in it, it we'd be the most proud yeah. of that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I don't know if you want to be known as like the worst director of all time. The worst. Well, like, but he doesn't how, see it that yeah. way. Yeah, right. And hopefully you work beyond that. Like, you gotta you know, he's, start He was but. like a, he's like a pre-Tommy Wiseau, you know? Mm-hmm. Tommy Wiseau doesn't think The Room is a bad movie. Yeah. Like, I admire that. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Huey mm-hmm. Bowl loves all of his movies. Mm-hmm. He should. Yep. He's still working, damn it. Still working. <laughs> is like he after get, his latest outburst? I get why he had Let's money in the him. beginning was because like people were funding him before they saw the movies. Right. Because he had video game titles. Right. Yeah. But then after that came you know, after it was like, oh, this is guy is one of the worst mo- directors of all time, it all dried up. But he's still making movies. Come at us, you wee bull. <laughs> You'll do nothing oh, shit. but raise he, our profile. If he hears that, he's going to want to fight. He well, he'll no, sue us. He'll try one and sue us. Though. No, we're still no, in a feud no, with he, Larry Block. He doesn't sue. He just Aww. goes. Out, he just goes on rants <laughs> and calls us all pieces of shit. That's his thing. And then he no, he actually us to fight. brings people into the ring and fights them. Yep. 
But yeah, he, he is actually too. a boxer, so it's unfair. He actually does. Here's the thing, right. though: if he, if he starts a fight with us, it's only going to benefit mm. us. He's going to raise our profile so much by starting a fight with us. So go <laughs> ahead, come at us. Concussions and what have you. Um, I'm glad what that says about us that Uva Bowl is going to raise our. Hey, you hear that? Hey, whenever he Uva fights Bowl. with someone, AV Club writes an article about it. True. So go ahead, fight guess, with us. I guess it can't be bad. There you go. <laughs> Fuck you, Uva Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> We got anything else to say about this uh, film that we watched? That well, I know we have a lot to say about it, but uh, in this portion of our show, before we wrap it up, it had a cool title sequence. I thought that did. was pretty fun. It had a great title sequence. All the names on the gravestones fading yeah, in and fun. out. Yeah. I miss cool. title sequences. I was just thinking about that the other day. Yeah. Where'd they go? So you're usually now, at the end now. If they now do we don't have, have them. To have them. Yeah, I know because I'm sitting there going like, "Oh, who's in this movie again?" You don't know because you didn't see it. You know why? Because the studio's like, we can't waste any time getting into the movie. People no. don't have the attention span. Put it at the end. We know that this movie eventually is going to be watched by somebody on their phone and they only have 10 seconds or whatever to mm-hmm. grab them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Good title yeah. sequence. I know. It's an art David form. Cronenberg once described the title sequence in the best way that I remember. That was like after the trailers, but before the movie, he needs space where he can get you into the mood. Yeah. And this is kind of like the uh, the lobby for the movie, the title sequence. So like sticking your toe in the water to get a sense it's, of the temperature. Right. This is also where you get a like. It's like you're leaving the world behind. Right. And you're mm-hmm. slowly and that's where you hook with a good over. score. That's just where your score is going to like be a key piece. I mean, that's, you like, got to draw yeah, them in. It's no different than, you know, the opening music of a TV show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same, you know, Same that's thing. where all the title sequences have gone to TV. True. TV has True. really yeah. good title sequences now. Yeah, yeah just, you like, just skip ooh, past them. Some shit. You watch them the first I watch time. On I watch them every time. I was at a friend's house last weekend, and um, she and her husband got into an argument because we were watching The Office, and he and she wanted to skip the intro, and he's like, "No, I want to get into the mood of The Office." And yeah, he, yeah. Never. Mm-hmm. They got into an argument about it. It was really funny. I watch them every time because I just I always try to figure out how they're made or what they use to make them. Like mm-hmm. especially the more complex ones like Westworld and Game of Thrones. Yeah, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch is an amazing one. It does. That so, is a good one. Yeah, I watch them. I'll watch them every time. After a while, mm-hmm. I start skipping the Mad Men one. That yeah. one's that one's a lot of nothing. What are you talking I mean, about? That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a good. That's a really good opening. But good but once you've seen it, you're just like it doesn't change. I think at all. the music I've doesn't also, help it. I, I like that. Oh, it's a very good opening. It's I a also, very, I skipped, sleepy time like <laughs> mood, you know. Um, like the uh, Mine Hunter one. Uh, yeah, I skipped, I, that. Yeah. I skipped that one. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. oh, I saw this once. I'm done. Yeah. I, re- I skipped that one. I I've watched um, Haunting of Hill House like five times this year, mm-hmm. and I I can't bring myself to skip the intro. I, I mean, know. I keep I get, watching. I get the too intro. excited. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, for the folks who are here about Plan Nine, tell you what, we just stick with us for a little while longer. First of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. In order to do that, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, well, thank you, Igor. He's got one of those like little glow, like shimmery alien dresses they had on the unisex like does he have, does he have the, the battle axe symbol on his right? chest yes. like yeah. the leader yeah. did See, we just, I mean that I was what that was that was probably used as a hangman's costume at some point right right yeah. or right? some medieval like all of this was used somewhere some before dude oh, yeah. in knight's armor used that yeah. shit mm-hmm. it's like yeah. what was that yeah. Oof, they really were just grabbing whatever they had yeah we said the aliens, but they are just people in like those, I imagine, silver puffy so, suits. Yeah. So for the cop uniforms, those were actual cop uniforms. They, oh. looked, they looked real. I someone, bought it. Someone knew a cop that was able to lend them uniforms and cars. Nice. Yeah. Wow. The 50s. The Who knew? You, know. you could literally do anything back then, huh? You really wow. could. Wasn't yeah. a cop car back then just a car with a light on it? Mm, basically. Well, uh, <laughs> that you would put on yourself, you would reach out like, and put on yeah, yourself. Kind of like, yeah. Yeah, car 54, where are you or yeah. whatever? It looked like yeah. Stallone's car from fucking Cobra. <laughs> Cobra. Cobra. Uh, so we should probably let people know how they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. By Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or by Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Nelson Nascimento, I hope I said your name right, says, I recently discovered this podcast and have been listening heavily to the back catalog. Love the banter between all the guests and the deep dives in all types of genre. The Freak Show has quickly become a must listen upon release. I love what you guys are doing. If it ever comes up on your plate, I would love to hear the Freak Show tackle Society, directed by Brian (laughs) Usda. Continued success. Yikes. Um, Thank you for that 
review or yes, that thank comment. You very very that was kind. wonderful. That was really nice. But Man, it's God, getting, I do not want to watch that movie. Society's getting Beetlejuice. It's getting. It's been <laughs> mentioned a lot lately. A lot lately. I think we got to go with the like. The, it's the, having a resurgence the right now. that are happening yeah. here. But we will like, say hmm. there is a chance we're going to be doing Listener Pick Month pretty soon. That's so right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Stay yeah. tuned. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, well, a user named XCheer85 says. The current panel of the Internet Radio Superstars deliver a fantastic analysis every Saturday, and I had many that I and others, many others look forward to with fiendish abandon. You have dedicated and wise Colin, bringing a pedigree of horror movie worship Ooh. unparalleled by any other Aww. podcast I have found. Wow. Holly oh. injects a vibrancy and passion for horror movies and the surrounding culture that is delightful as her flora namesake. Every group <laughs> needs their tough, no-nonsense, ride-or-die voice of reasonable insanity, and Michaela has yeah. that and a bag of oh, non-copyright yeah. infringing snacks. Last but not least, <laughs> the Saturday Night Freak Show is rounded out by the raw sexual magnetism <laughs> of Sean, the sequel loving sex bot. Thanks, yes. for, thanks for the info, laughs, and feeling of self-importance I get every time these gals and guys read my name. I look forward to what they do every Saturday. I'm going to need a copy of that framed to like read every morning I, I, when I wake I up. I also will need that. Yeah, that, that, You have a way with language, dear, wow, dear Brailler. The best for I'm last. sorry. Wow. Well, thank you. Well done. Well, you well want to get done, on our sir. show. That's the way to do it. That was beautiful. <laughs> what you, a tapestry yeah. of vocabulary. Go back and read that again. Gorgeous. <laughs> We're reading that again off mic. All right. Um, <laughs> about Plan 9 from Outer Space, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, I've seen this on a Riff Tracks live event. It's dumb, but it's honestly far from the worst movie ever made. Yeah. It's not like the room level bad or anything. It's an original, if not half thought out, movie idea. Plus, Tor Johnson does does not make a convincing police chief. That is true. No, yeah. not at I mean, all. You bring up Rift Tracks. Um, the Mike from Mystery Science Theater mentioned before that the reason they've never done it is there's too much dialogue. Oh, there's not enough time for uh, them to fit in jokes. Uh, yeah, true. Have they haven't ever done it. They've never done it because yeah, there's, there's, oh, there's too there's much dialogue. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, especially in. Whoa, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Uh, my unfab life rights in says I would have thought this would have been the first movie you ever did. I know I'm shocked. There's some obvious things we haven't done. Yeah. Uh, Fresno film buff says it's a riot. Yeah. We'll get to it. (laughs) All right. Hilarious. Uh, I see the last week's episode we watched. I see you. We did. That's I with the ocular. Right. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Right. I did too. (laughs) Uh, C Huds. Chuds, Chuds. Yeah. Chuds. Welcome back. C Huds writes in. Yeah, that's right. Welcome back, sir. He says, We'll watch this for the first time today. It's a good little thriller, and it makes no sense that it was shelved. Great cast, good production values, and a cool setting. Stallone certainly done far worse, and it helps that it's pre weird plastic surgery Stallone. Mm, yeah, we talked about that yeah. in the episode. Well, uh, we thought I, that okay. he had plastic surgery prior to I see. We it. thought. Well, it looked like yeah, but pre weird plastic surgery right. is the key. Because I think so. he's had a, like a, a a little lift, a little, a little talk, lift, but yeah. it hasn't been extreme. <clears throat> now he yet. looks like a melted action figure. He he's, really does. It's, things that aren't going in the right places, yes. and he's puffy. Yeah. Everywhere and what was our final uh verdict on I see? Uh, I was the only one who recommended okay. it, yes. <laughs> so I agree. See, <laughs> okay. well, there you go. Well, about uh, the previous movie, uh, previous week's movie, Blood Rage, uh, uh yes. Johnny New Jersey writes, the greatest movie says, we watched this year. <laughs> Sorry, Holly, <laughs> god damn it. Well, there Fucking might be flu. something about that. Uh, Johnny New Jersey writes in and says, Great pick, Colin. I was also waiting for this review since last year. Glad you all enjoyed Blood Rage just as much as me. Since Thanksgiving movies are slim pickings, I'm calling Intruder a Thanksgiving horror movie also. People go crazy this time of year at the grocery store. Anyway, so it fits. Agree. I'll take that. Uh, he thinks, because we were talking about, like, well, should we be going back and re-watching old movies that we've done? He says that uh, basically he just wants to hear our reactions to movies where we weren't there. We all want... Holly's reaction to Blood Rage, Michaela's mm. opinion of the sweet 90s cameo stank of the faculty, and for the love of God, <laughs> we want live and immediate post reaction to Sean to Samurai Cop. Yeah, uh, I, it's oh true. my God, true. I forgot you weren't here for I was Samurai not here Cop. For Samurai Cop. You, it might have broke uh, you. 
<laughs> it might. It would have brought See, you very close. Things, uh. <laughs> Well, it's he suggests that uh, you got to go home, watch it, come back, and do like a review show of the stuff you missed. It's not the same watching it by yourself. Same, yeah, though. It's, not, it's, it's not, not the same doing it and then having it here and being right on it. Like, afterwards. I wouldn't watch Samurai Cop by myself in the darkness of winter. Like, that seems like a bad combination <laughs> for your yeah, mental that's, stability. That's, yeah, that yeah. is a suicide note waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, blame it all on the cop. The yeah. Samurai cop. <laughs> well, Johnny, New Jersey, also wishes happy Thanksgiving to us all and oh, says, pass, please pass the cranberry sauce. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you, Johnny. Great. Grant Parrish, upon learning that Ted Raimi is in the movie, says, Ugh, does he die horribly? <laughs> is it worse than Wishmaster? 100% irrational, but I friggin' hate Ted Raimi. I remember that from when we did Intruder, the, yeah. the irrational Ted Raimi hate came yeah. up there, too. Yeah, I, like I mean, it. I get I'm it. We all, was, we all have people like that. Was he the lawyer who fucked himself in Wishmaster? I, I thought he was... He Was he on the dock? Didn't he get No, like, he gets the crate dropped, dropped on him, right? Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which I think is the first one, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. On the dock, he gets killed. Gotcha. Uh, Dave Forbes says, after listening to the podcast, I'm definitely going to have to check this one out. Love me some 80s gore. Yo. Now you're sure it's not cranberry sauce, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to check it out too, buddy. Y'all. Yeah. And uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen says, I watched Blood Rage. The actress playing the mother had some memorable moments in the gore was a highlight similar to intruder film was utterly terrible though my wife kept going on about the mother in her shitty bra her <laughs> boobs were all over the place we Dis- talked about disconcerting that. boobs yeah. i was unsettled Every, but everything about that movie was unsettling. unsettling the color palette even was unsettling was bad. blood rate yeah you For missed such a good a one really. <laughs> god damn it well, maybe we'll have to do it thanksgiving hasn't happened Ugh, yet yeah. and, you know all knows? times to have the flu i bought Why? a turkey yeah mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that means we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of Plan 9 from Outer Space, the worst movie ever made. Yes, Sean. Colin, what did you think of Plan 9 from Outer Space? Uh, it's a pretty bad movie. I mean, it's not the worst movie, like we were talking about before. It's not the worst thing that I've ever seen. Mean Guns. That was worse. (laughs) You're right. That was worse. That was hard. Mean Guns is worse. (laughs) Mean Guns is bad. Um, it is... I guess it is doing the thing that I say a bad movie does, and that's it's boring through a lot of it because you're just kind of, you know. But I think there's been this is the the thing, right? When you're watching this with now with that kind of historical context, you're able to sit there going like, "Well, this is clearly why it was, you know, considered one of the worst movies ever made because right. they're doing this." And so you kind of sit there with your jaw open, going like, "I can't believe that they got away with this that somebody was able to to make this kind of movie." So from a um, like a, uh, a a cinephile perspective, you should probably see Plan Nine from Outer Space because it is a riot. You know, well, I don't. Is it a riot? It's not a riot. For like no, the first no. half, it wasn't a riot. It's we weren't riot. actually laughing our asses off while we watched this we did movie. Laugh many we times. did in the first uh, half, and then yeah. it hits that slow down, and there there's are no things recovering. to laugh at. A riot? No, we could never call this a riot. Yeah. So it's not a riot. I'm going to disagree with uh, the the listener wrote in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've this is the second time I've seen it. Mm-hmm. I saw it the first time, and it was like boring. And I'm like, well, this is bad. Yeah. And now I watched it tonight, and I'm like, eh, it's still bad. Yeah. But I think, like I said, uh, it can be fun under the right circumstances. And I think it's worth checking out only for, you know, mainly for its uh, uh, historical, historical significance. V- significant. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to see, in order to know that it, you're seeing a great movie, yeah, you have to have a baseline. You really do, and it does. There is, it has reached the point where there is a historical significance to Plan Nine from Outer Space. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's uh, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but yeah, I guess I would recommend <laughs> Plan Nine from Outer Space. Sean, what do you think? Um, I mean, that's the only reason. I think it's the only reason you can rec- uh recommend this is because of its historical significance otherwise yeah it's pretty boring um i would never want to watch this again i mean i'm glad i we hit the peak of it watching here with with uh, everyone here tonight um and you know we got a few laughs out of it and everything but it is uh it's it's yeah it's bad um <laughs> it's, it's it's bad um i would never want to watch it again um it's i, I say that and then i'm now I'm going to say I'm glad I watched it just so I can watch Ed Wood yes. and understand that, which is, I guess, the best reason to watch this movie. 
So that's the only way. Like, if you want to watch Ed Wood, like, watch this so you can know what's happening in that. It should be a special feature that you know, it, like comes that's along it. with the way that Dolomite should be Shh. paired with. You right. Know. You need. I, what, you just saw that movie. Yeah. I mean, do you have to have seen Dolomite in order to appreciate Dolomite is my name? Because this is what we're talking about with Ed Wood. I think you have to know who what Dolomite is. I don't know if you have to necessarily see the movie. There are certain points where you see like specific scenes from Dolomite well, that's being what, acted out. Yeah, so but they do I that think, in Ed Wood, and right? Then is it out of context? But you, I think I think you could still very much enjoy that movie because you you get the spirit of it. You get what they're do, what trying to do, and because they're commenting on the the badness of it or the not quite high level of movie making. You understand it. You get a higher understanding of it if you've seen the movies, but you are not left out of the joke if you're just watching the movie. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Again, only if you're really interested in watching Ed Wood and would I recommend this movie. And that's the only way. Because other than that, I, it, it didn't do anything for me. Sorry, Tor. Uh, this, <laughs> you, you, you did not complete your job. So, ah! Uh, otherwise, unless you want to watch Ed Wood, sure. But other than that, nah. Uh, it's uh, historical significance. I don't know. You take it upon yourself. I would. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it, but do with that what you will. I, I can't. I just, yeah, it's not. It's not for me. So, <laughs> Michaela, that's a hard one because again, historical significance. I know. Yeah, I know. But uh, but you oof, didn't enjoy yeah. it. But I did not enjoy it. So yeah. eh, I mean, I'm going to say. But no. that's film class. I mean, there's that. Yeah, watching that movies is, that are that historically is, significant that you don't enjoy. Film class yeah, 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 that's exactly what film class is. For, for at least ninety percent of the movies you watch, every once in a while you'll get unexpected surprise. But True. most of the time, it's. True. I know this is important, but I hate it. <laughs> that's film yeah. school. Um, yeah. This is not the worst movie I've ever seen. No, uh, it's. Like it's not even like the worst movie from this era. I don't think I've ever seen. No, even. no. Like I said it's not. I was not offended by this movie. At no, any point. I think that like I don't like. I'm really curious how that kind of idea came about and how it stuck along, stuck around so long for this particular movie. Especially when we have things like Troll Two that have a documentary literally called Best Worst Movie and things like that. Um, well, it was because of Mike. Med- it was because of the yeah. Golden Turkey thing, right? right. Because after that's perpetuating that, it. Yeah. yeah. After that, uh, Ed Wood posthumously won the Golden Turkey Award for gotcha. like worst director mm-hmm. of all time. He did. Or something like, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I I love the cemetery set. I thought that was really cool. Actually, I like the aesthetics of like movies from this time. Yeah. Sure. Um, whether yeah. they're there, good or they're the bad, shots. and that goes a long way for me. So like the aesthetics of this movie. Vampire on Bela Lugosi. Five bushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like all a fog machine to cover everything else. Right. You know, I lo- I love that kind of spooky aesthetic like that. Um, I, w- I w- I'm kind of surprised this is not like you know how they'll do those showings in cemeteries. They'll show horror movies mm. in cemeteries. Why is this not one of them? Since it's like ninety percent in a cemetery, sure. right? And it is only like an hour and eighteen minutes. Yeah, it it's is quick, it's short, which is um, good. What? Did not feel like it. Felt like an hour and a half yeah, movie. I, I felt, felt like, like the first half, half went at a good clip, and it then did. It, First half did, yeah. then it was just like, well, science. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the first half was really enjoyable, especially because I didn't know Bella the Ghost or Vampire or Yeah, this. I didn't know either. Yeah. I didn't know anything about this movie yeah. going into it. I yeah. thought it was going to be a straight up sci-fi movie, like 100%, so I wasn't expecting like And I was ghouls. expecting like aliens. Yes. Like, yeah. Fucking yeah. costumed aliens. Yeah. I was but again, ex- budget. I was expecting more like a, like a really bad version of Green Slime. You know, yeah, I was expecting yeah, more like yeah, that yeah, type yeah. of movie. More like people are like we're living in space. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's what I expect. Or sure. something comes from space, and then, yeah. Right. But this is like I don't know. It's 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 like half baked zombie movie at the beginning. Zombie yeah. or vampire, both. I know. Movie. Both, yeah. um, I know. And then it's just a space lecture movie after that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, I think you got to watch it because you have to have a baseline for what is bad. So, um, for educational purposes, I think you absolutely have to watch it. Um, <laughs> you might not enjoy it, but it's good. Purposes. It's 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 like you know, it's like taking your vitamins. You might not enjoy it, but it's <laughs> right. good for you. So, you know, it's <laughs> better in the long run. That's so, it. Uh, there you go. So yeah, I think you should watch it. You might not like. You might not like us for telling you to watch it, but that's life. So. There's Holly. that's very accurate. Yeah, you better eat your weedies. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I think we're all on the same page that for educational purposes, general consensus, you got to watch this movie just for what it is for. For knowing that, it, you know, considered one of the worst films ever made. But like you said, we have to have a baseline to make a, a an assumption like that. Um, 
Because it's really, I don't think it's really one of the worst. It's not one of the worst I've seen no. by any means. Um, so it would be pretty high up. It'd be pretty lower, I guess, low on the list um, for my worst movies. Um, I definitely think you should watch it. It's it's not offensively boring. It's boring, but it's not offensively boring. There's there's some ridiculousness about it that makes it funny, that it makes it watchable. Um, and definitely watch it just so you can really enjoy Ed Wood. It's a wonderful movie, one of Tim Burton's best. Um, and you really have an appreciation for this movie after watching. I think that's one of my biggest things is like, I appreciate this movie because I have seen Ed Wood and I'm like, you know what? There's something really charming about it. There's, there's definitely a nostalgia about this movie. Um, like I said, I, I can appreciate Ed Wood for what he was for the director that he was for his passion. Um, he was proud of his work and, I, I I gotta I gotta admire someone who just goes all in on what he believes in. So and we can I, only hope to be proud of our work at some point. So it's <laughs> yeah, something to admire. Yeah, I'm like I I admire the hell out of that, yeah. and I, I think it's definitely something to experience. So I think you should definitely watch Plan Nine from Outer Space. There you go. There you go. Well, there it is. <clears throat> that's Plan Nine from Outer Space. So next week, that means we're watching a movie that's chosen by Michaela. Uh, Michaela, what are we going to watch next week? Plan six, maybe? <laughs> uh, no, it is the holiday season. Uh, so we are going to watch a British slasher movie I'm from in. 1984 <laughs> called Don't Open Till Christmas. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I dug deep for this one. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle for us to watch. So. <laughs> oh, no. Colin, Colin and I have had to make a team effort to find a way to watch uh-huh. this but movie. We, but so. we found it. Yeah. Okay, good. Don't open so till So listeners, Christmas. if you need a way to watch it, just DM us and we'll help you out. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Don't open till Christmas. Because I was under the impression that Slaughter High was the only British nope. slasher movie, but apparently predating well, that. that. Was a, yeah. But is this yes. one, is this one, that was British trying to be American. Yeah. Is this British is being this, British? Do I get real Brits? I think Tell it's trying to be Brits. American, is but not, to, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, oh this would be interesting out. to watch. I want real Brits. All right, so there you go. Don't open till Christmas. Right, he's got, I think he's got a knife. Well, <laughs> he might have a knife. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. It just turns into clue. If you're playing along with the Saturday Night Freak Show, you get to watch this before we <laughs> uh, uh, spoil it for you. Yes. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs... The basement is going dark.